Hello and welcome. Bruce Fulton here, School of Information, University of Arizona. In this recording, I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu Desktop version 20.04, long-term supported, as a virtual machine running in VMware Fusion version 11.5. Those are the latest versions available as I'm recording this. Uh, to begin, we're going to need a couple of things, so let's get started. You're first going to need the VMware Fusion or Fusion Pro application. These are available as a free trial. Uh, you can visit the link that I've shown here on the screen to get that. Uh, between Fusion 11.5 and Fusion 11.5 Pro, uh, if all you're going to do is experiment around with the um, Ubuntu application, maybe a couple of other virtual machines, the regular Fusion is probably going to work for you. Uh, the Fusion Pro adds some network configuration, uh, a few other features. You can uh, take a look and see if you think you need the uh, uh, Pro product. Uh, it's going to be more expensive if you decide to go ahead and purchase it. The free trial, I think, lasts about 30 days, uh, after which you can convert the free trial to uh, a license. Uh, if you're a student uh, at a university, uh, community college, something or other like that, be sure to investigate the academic discount. Uh, that's substantial and it will save you a lot of money. Although I have to say that the Fusion product is, is not as expensive as the um, uh, workstation product for Windows. So go ahead and get that. Uh, the installation is pretty simple. I'm not going to cover installation of the Fusion product. The next thing you're going to want to get is the Ubuntu desktop uh, ISO file. Uh, to get that, uh, visit ubuntu.com. Uh, an ISO file is an image of a CD. Uh, now, you're not going to actually need a CD player to install this. The uh, uh, VMware product is going to be able to take that ISO file, which is the image of the CD, and use that directly in order to install the application. Uh, so in order to get the product, uh, you're going to go ahead and visit the download page here. Uh, the latest version, uh, as I'm looking at this, is 20.04. Uh, if you happen to need uh, an older version, uh, you can look here where it says Older Releases, uh, any of the older releases. Uh, I would recommend you not go back farther than 18.04. Uh, 18.04 is the reintroduction of the GNOME desktop. Uh, prior to that, uh, Ubuntu was using what they called the Unity desktop. On the surface, they're similar, but under the hood, there are quite a few differences. Uh, the difference between 18.04 and 20.04 uh, is that there are some improvements in 20.04 that allow the installation to go a little bit faster. There are also some performance improvements. So in general, I would recommend that you run 20.04. Uh, but if there happen to be some minor incompatibilities and you need to go back a version, uh, then you can try the version 18.04. Uh, so let's go back to the screen here. Uh, all you need to do to download this is to click it. Uh, a download screen will open uh, and um, uh, you'll be able to um, uh, save this file. Uh, if it doesn't start uh, downloading automatically, you can click the Download Now button. Uh, should appear momentarily here. Uh, I'm going to um, uh, stop that in any case because I already have the file. But you need to save that uh, to a handy place, uh, perhaps on your desktop uh, or in your downloads file. Uh, note also that they would like you to um, uh, perhaps rate a few things. Um, uh, and you also have the opportunity to make a contribution. Um, it's a good project. Uh, uh, if you want to kick them a few bucks, that would be great, but you're certainly not obligated to. So now we have the two things we need. Hopefully you've installed Fusion, uh, you've downloaded the ISO, so now let's uh, see what it takes to get this installed. Let me bring up the Fusion product. Uh, let's see, I have that right here. Uh, if you haven't installed anything, uh, this is the first screen that you'll get, uh, and you'll be asked to select the installation method. If you've already installed some virtual machines, uh, it will probably open up uh, one of them uh, to be ready to turn it on, uh, or it might show you a library of virtual machines. 
there are a few different ways that you can install things. The, the way that you'll install, uh, especially using the standard product, um, uh, and also the pro product is to install from a disk or image, and that's the ISO file that you've downloaded. Uh, if you have pro, which I do, there are a few other options that you have. Uh, you may not see all these options on the standard product, but in any case, the one that you want uh, is to install from disk or image. The simplest way to do this uh, is to uh, drag and drop the ISO file uh, onto that pad there. I've got my ISO file. Uh, in a, a flash drive, but you can also pull it up from uh, your downloads or where your desktop or wherever you downloaded it. Uh, here's the file here that I downloaded. Um, note that uh, I don't have a rev number here yet, but as this uh, file gets older, uh, they do occasionally add updates, and so you might see a rev number as you see with uh, the 1804 files I've got here. In any case, all we need to do is, is drag that uh, file on over. Better job. There we go. Uh, and it's going to uh, choose an operating system installation disk or image. Uh, we've got that one. Uh, and now we want to uh, go ahead and continue. Uh, now we uh, will uh, choose the easy install. Uh, if you've watched my other uh, um, uh, installations on the server. We actually use a custom method. We don't use easy install uh, on the server images, but uh, for the desktop, easy install is actually the preferred method. Uh, we're going to choose a display name and an account name, which is the username. If you want to go ahead and use your own name, that's fine. I usually recommend something very simple uh, for these demo systems. Uh, security is not going to be an issue running a virtual machine on your own desktop, so I recommend something simple like user1 uh, and user1. Uh, this corresponds to a lot of my other documentation. If you use my recommended settings, then you don't have to think about it too much. Uh, I do caution you that um, uh, you should write it down if you don't follow my recommended settings and you're not using my other documentation. Uh, if you get to the end and uh, you either forget it or you, you've mistyped it or something, uh, it is going to be easier just to reinstall than to try to recover it. So uh, I use password uh, for the password. I uh, will confirm that. Uh, and now that uh, we've confirmed that, we can go ahead and continue. Uh, and it shows you a virtual machine uh, summary. Uh, at this point, there's very little reason to go in and customize those settings. The only thing you might do uh, is you might change the memory. Uh, uh, the, the memory, the minimum memory that uh, these virtual machines are going to require to run is 4 gigabytes, which means that you should have about 6 megabytes, or excuse me, gigabytes on your uh, system. Uh, but uh, um, uh, 4 gigabytes um, is, is fine at least to get the... Um, uh, installation done, and then you can come back and adjust this if you need to later. Uh, the new hard disk capacity, 20 gigabytes, is the uh, largest that the, the virtual disk uh, can go. Uh, you might want to consider increasing that uh, if you know for a fact that you are going to need more room. For example, if you're going to use this uh, a virtual disk to store a lot of uh, movie files, for example, uh, uh, a lot of photographs, uh, sound recordings, and you know for a fact that this virtual uh, machine is going to uh, exceed that capacity, then you might want to adjust it at this time because it won't grow larger than that. It will start out smaller and then increase in capacity up to this limit. Uh, if you need to customize any of the settings at this time, you can click the Customize Settings button. Uh, and adjust any of these. Uh, but it's usually not necessary, at least to get the installation going. So now we can click Finish. Uh, and with that, um, the installation is going to start. Uh, we would only need to um, uh, perhaps um, uh, change the settings. I would recommend uh, perhaps uh, choosing a new name, a uh, simple machine name. Uh, I would choose something like Ubuntu. 2004 D for desktop. Uh, uh, be sure you to, to, to not use spaces. Don't use fancy characters. This is both the machine name and also the name of the directory. 
uh, on your computer. If you happen to want to put it someplace else, there's a virtual machine uh, uh, file location uh, that's set up when you install a VMware Fusion. Uh, if you want to put it somewhere else, for example, on a, on a flash drive or something, you can do that. Uh, but I usually just save the default uh, on that. Uh, we can click Save. Uh, and then uh, I think we're going to be ready to go here. So as you can see, the installation is now proceeding. Uh, this will go on its own. Uh, it doesn't require any intervention on your part. Um, uh, so I would recommend you pretty much just leave it alone. You might want to watch this um, as um, uh, it, it will give you some uh, introduction to the software, some tips, uh, and, and other kinds of things. Um, I'm going to pause the recording here. This can take about a half an hour. Uh, so I'm going to pause the recording, uh, and uh, then I'll come back and give you just a very brief introduction of the desktop uh, once the installation is complete, just to kind of get you going on it. All right, we're back. As you can see, we now are installed. Uh, we will go ahead and uh, select the user. Of course, there's only one user at this point. We'll need to enter the password. It'll take a few minutes the first time for the desktop to set up. It says error uh, while running SoundStream. That's correct because uh, during the uh, setup, it asked me where I wanted to connect the sound system and I did select the host computer. Uh, so that shouldn't cause a problem. Uh, you can select uh, where you want your peripherals to connect. Um, you may have uh, sound uh, cards, various USB devices such as external disks, uh, flash drives, and so on. Uh, and it's up to you to select uh, where you want those to connect, whether you want them connected to the host computer. Uh, or whether you want them connected um, uh, to the virtual machine. Uh, keep in mind that if you connect them to one, they're usually typically not available to the other machine. Uh, so keep that in mind uh, when you're prompted to uh, connect to different devices. Uh, the first time you uh, uh, run the virtual machine, uh, it's going to ask you um, about uh, how you want to uh, handle certain things, whether you want to connect your online accounts uh, to the virtual machine. It's up to you. Uh, generally, I, I recommend uh, uh, keeping the virtual machine sandboxed, um, but it's up to you depending on how you want to use the virtual machine and what you want to use it for. Uh, you're, you're asked about uh, doing live patch. That's a way of keeping your virtual machine updated. I'm going to skip all these for now. Uh, sending reports to Ubuntu. You get similar prompts when you bring up uh, a Windows or a Mac uh, computer. Um, uh, helping to approve Ubuntu uh, privacy, whether you want to turn on location services, uh, you're ready to go, you can use software, uh, and so on. So we'll get those out of the way. Uh, I think you'll find that the uh, a GNOME desktop um, is, is fairly intuitive. It works pretty much like the desktop in Mac and Windows. Uh, you have your favorites bar across the left. It's pre-populated with uh, a few things that uh, the applications uh, App here is very similar to the Google uh, Windows Mac Play Store. Uh, the first time you run it, um, it'll take a while to populate. Uh, very soon, by the way, you'll be hit with the software updater uh, because even though it went out and grabbed some things during the installation, uh, there are going to be updates. Uh, for the time being, I'm going to uh, not do this um, and hit remind me later, but uh, at the earliest opportunity, you should keep your uh, virtual machine updated. As I was saying on the favorites, it's, it's positioned here on the left. Uh, of course, on the Windows and Mac, it's, it's down along the bottom. Uh, there are ways of repositioning this um, if you want to uh, place it on the other side. I, I, I'm not, I don't recall if you can place it on the bottom or not, but um, I'll show you where the documentation is uh, on the desktop uh, uh, when I'm done with this quick walkthrough. Um, you can add and remove uh, uh, things from this. You right click and then you can remove from favorites. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of, of applications I think you need to be aware of. This will uh, list the applications. You can look at frequently used or all. Um, <clears throat> I'll point out that it does come with the uh, LibreOffice uh, suite of desktop applications, uh, uh, Calc, which is similar to uh, Excel, 
uh, uh, Impress, which is similar to uh, PowerPoint uh, Writer, which is similar to uh, Microsoft Word. Uh, these are file format compatible with uh, Word documents, Microsoft uh, Office documents, so you can both open uh, Microsoft documents and also save in the Microsoft uh, Office document formats. Uh, let me take a look down here. There's a couple that I would like you to look at in particular. Uh, first is terminal. Uh, in, in Linux, uh, more than um, uh, the PC and the Mac, uh, there are some operations you need to perform at the command line. Uh, I've right-clicked it. I'm going to add that to favorites. Uh, just show you briefly what that looks like. Uh, we're going to double-click it to open it. It's going to bring up a terminal window. Uh, and as I say, for configuration for some kinds of installations and so on, uh, you may be required to enter uh, commands at the terminal. Uh, here, for example, ls is um, the command to uh, list uh, the contents of the directory that you're in. Uh, so this shows, uh, for example, the, the uh, subfolders that are available uh, in my user space. Uh, I would encourage you to learn a little bit about the command line uh, if you're going to be playing around with these virtual machines because you, you may need it sooner or later. Uh, the other application that you should become familiar with, uh, let's see, let me go back to uh, the second screen here, uh, is the uh, setup application. Um, let's see, where did that go? Settings, here we go. Let me uh, also add this to favorites. Uh, and run that. Uh, this is typical um, uh, of the uh, setup application on, on Mac and Windows uh, as well. Uh, it takes a second to load. Uh, there are the same kinds of, of groups of things, sound, power, displays, uh, what, your, what your desktop looks like, um, appearance. Uh, let me um, look at displays here. Um, one thing you may want to pay attention to is the resolution here. Uh, you may or may not need to set this. Uh, let me first show you what some of your options are in, in the VMware Fusion application. Uh, we can take a look at view here. Uh, you have a couple of options. Uh, the resize virtual machine to fit works pretty well. When you select that, um, if you resize the virtual machine uh, uh, window here, uh, it's pretty good. Let me um, close that again and get rid of this. Uh, and it, if, you, if you grab the, the corner here and resize this, um, it will reset uh, and, and adjust the size according to the window size that you set. So if we move this back and forth, uh, and so on. It will uh, play around with it and resize. That's the setting that I would recommend. Uh, you can also go full screen. If we go uh, here, you can either select full screen uh, or you can do this um, uh, control command F uh, and that will uh, take up the whole of your um, uh, monitor with, with the uh, virtual machine. Uh, to get out of that, you need to do the uh, control alt um, and then enter and that will get you out of full screen. Uh, you can also pick a display resolution and, and hard set it if you want to. Uh, so you don't always need to use that um, uh, uh, display size in the settings uh, here itself. But depending on your monitor, your resolution, the capabilities of your system, that may be something you need to pay attention to. Uh, you do get the Firefox browser, you get the Thunderbird mail, uh, as I say, um, uh, you, can you can play around with these and then you can add and remove programs uh, using the, uh, using the uh, uh, new programs uh, uh, button. You can also remove programs that are uh, pre-installed if you don't want them on your system. Uh, so I think I've covered what I need to up here uh, as far as the displays. You can play around with these. Um, uh, there, there's a little bit more facility, I think, in, in the Windows um, uh, workstation view for adjusting um, uh, what goes on around the virtual machine. Um, let, me, let me cover one um, important aspect um, that is um, uh, you should know about, and that's snapshots. 
A snapshot is a is basically a backup of your virtual machine the way it is. So uh, if, if you're concerned about, for example, loading software, doing an update, you should take a snapshot. Before that, that preserves your, your system state. Um, it does take up a lot of uh, disk space um, because you're basically cloning your machine. Uh, so once you get a couple of snapshots down, you might want to think about deleting older snapshots because it does take up room on your hard drive. Uh, but you can uh, label them, uh, keep track of them, and keep a running set of them. However many snapshots you want to hold at one time uh, uh, is, is uh, up to you. Uh, but that's an important feature. And, and don't forget, when you're making changes to your system, it's always a good idea to take a snapshot first in case something goes wrong. Uh, so I think that's about what I want to talk to you about the desktop. Let me talk briefly about uh, shutting down the system. You can, of course, um, uh, go uh, power off or log out here uh, using the uh, virtual machine itself. You can uh, suspend uh, power off or log out. Uh, so I'll demonstrate the power off here, the system or power off. Uh, or you can also restart it from there. Uh, and that will shut the system down. Uh, let me restart uh, this now that I've uh, shut it down. Restart it by clicking the start icon. And that will uh, reboot the system. You get this uh, message that says you can't connect the virtual device SATA 1. It looks like an error message, but it's really not. It can't connect to that device because you don't probably have a SATA drive on your system. Uh, and it asks, do you want to try to connect this virtual device every time you power on the virtual machine? Since you don't have one, you almost certainly want to answer no to this. That question uh, comes up and is sometimes confusing to people the first time they see it. But uh, unless you have a SATA drive and you want to connect it, the answer to that would be no. Here again, we have the uh, sound, um, sound issue. If you want sound, go ahead and... and um, uh, uh, connect your sound to the virtual machine. You probably want that, but because I'm recording and doing things um, uh, with the system, uh, I went ahead and selected not to uh, connect the sound. And that's a decision that you can change uh, at a later time. All right, as you can see, uh, uh, the desktop is back. I've logged in. I want to show you the other thing you can do besides shutting down the machine. Uh, this icon up here uh, indicates, uh, not that one, uh, this one here on the VMware menu indicates that you can suspend the guest operating system. What that means is, um, let's uh, bring up the LibreOffice Writer. Uh, suppose we're in the middle of something, uh, working on a document, working on a spreadsheet, uh, perhaps we're in the middle of a project. Uh, and as soon as this comes back up, so we'll start out. make something up and be working on a document. Uh, and then uh, when I pause the uh, uh, suspend the machine, uh, it's saving the virtual machine state. And it'll save the state exactly uh, as it is uh, when I stop working on it. it. Takes a few seconds. So this virtual machine is now um, in a suspended state. Uh, and when I start it up again, uh, it will bring me exactly back to the state that it was when I left it. So this is handy if you're working on projects. You don't have to fully shut down. Uh, and it's a convenient way to, uh, uh, to uh, preserve the state that you're working in. Uh, let me go back now, because uh, that's about all I want to uh, uh, cover, I think, for the desktop, because there really are better resources that I can show you in just a few minutes of, of working. Uh, during uh, post-installation. So let me bring back up the... Um, uh, and I will show you uh, where to find the documentation. If you'll go to Community, uh, and uh, uh, there's quite a bit in here to, uh, uh, to go through, but I, I just want to quickly point out the Ubuntu documentation. Uh, and uh, you can go to any one of these editions, but of course the 20.04 is here. Just go ahead and you can download it if you want to, but uh, it's just as easy to find it in the HTML version online. Uh, getting started with GNOME, let me uh, put that over in a new tab. Um, visual overview of GNOME, logging off and on your desktop, file folders and search. 
quite a bit of good stuff in here in the uh, getting started with GNOME. Uh, there are a few videos, I think, that are worth going through. Uh, and, and this is the uh, official documentation. Uh, so uh, a few videos that are worth going over. Uh, some common tasks, browsing the web, that'll probably be self-evident. Um, changing date, time, and time zone. Uh, connecting to online accounts. Uh, using Windows and Workspaces and so on. So uh, I, I think your time would be well spent here. Also, keep in mind that uh, YouTube is your friend. Uh, there are many, many um, videos by, by some excellent presenters uh, that will walk you through every facet of the uh, Ubuntu desktop. Uh, I also have some videos on Ubuntu Server if you're interested. Uh, and uh, again, many videos uh, on that. Uh, that's a whole different, uh, whole different topic. Uh, so I hope this has been helpful. Uh, please feel free to post any questions you might have or if you get stuck down in the comments below. Uh, and uh, thank you for watching.